Welcome back. It's time now to take a look at the top business stories. Positive growth outlook for UAE banks in 2011. EFI Private par Public Partnership strengthens foreign direct investments into Dubai. And we find out about how new labor laws will affect businesses in the region. markets ended mainly in the red today while the UAE bourses ended mixed. The DFM gained 0.2% to close at 1,607 points. The property sector posted losses today as EMAR properties fell by over a quarter of a percent and Arab tech lost over half a percent. Emirates NBD jumped over one and a quarter percent while Dubai Islamic Bank fell half a percent. Do lost over a quarter of a percent. 101 million shares were traded valued at 152 million dirhams. Over in the capital, the ADX fell over half a percent to close at 2,711 points. Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank gained one and a quarter percent. Alta Properties rose over one percent, while Suru Real Estate lost over three and a half percent. Taka fell over two percent. Eti Salat lost nearly one percent. Forty million shares were traded, valued at 66 million dirhams. And now it's time to take a look at the GCC markets, which ended mostly lower today. Coming up now, let's take a look at various currencies exchanged into dirhams followed by the price of oil and a selection of commodities. For detailed market analysis, we're joined by Anil Sachdev, head of DGCX operations at ACM Middle East. Welcome to the show, Anil. Asian stocks today rebounded from last week's worst performance since August, despite Japan's fourth quarter GDP shrinking. Why so much optimism? Hello, Linda. Well, for this, I would say one word, China. Chinese inflation levels are forecasted to rise only 4.9% against previous expectation of 5.4%, which is giving optimism to the markets that the inflation level won't be as high as they had previously thought, and that thus re reducing the need for incre uh, increasing the interest rates in China. Uh, this has led to these uh, good growth in the Asian markets today, with uh, markets uh, moving between 1% and 1.5%. And uh, with uh, the Shanghai Composite Index rising the most by 2.5%. Now, Japan's GDP shrank 1.1%, which was uh, lesser than the expectation of 2% decline in the last quarter of 2010. Now, this was uh, uh, due to the reducing uh, exports from Japan and also because the economic stimulus plans by the nation uh, was expiring soon. Now, this is cited to be temporary as economic growth picks up and we are expecting the Japanese economy to start increasing uh, it's in, in its uh, growth uh, by this year. Chinese um, growth has been uh, rising tremendously with exports rising 38% while imports uh, rose 51%. The euro is suffering on the back of the sovereign debt crisis yet again. On the other hand, the most indebted nations, Ireland, Greece, Spain, etc., they are this year's biggest stock market winners. It seems investors are becoming less concerned about the debt crisis. What's your take on that, Anil? Well, that's right. In a surprising and a true fact, Greece, Spain and Italy, uh, stock markets have been the best performing markets this year with growth between 12 to 15 percent. 
and uh, this uh, this is attributed to the fact that Germany and France have given a strong support to the euro currency. And they said that they'll do anything and everything in their powers to keep the currency afloat, and will, they will not let it fail. Now, most of the analysts uh, say said that one of these nations could uh, withdraw from the euro uh, currency in the next five years, but uh, those concerns have uh, died down as uh, uh, we have we are looking at uh, the eurozone bailout funds, uh, which are uh, which were given to these nations, having a uh, slower progress to these nations, and also that uh, the low cost of buying of the shares have uh, brought in a, a lot of rally into the markets, a uh, lot of buying of the stock. And uh, also the fact that uh, we, are, we are seeing that the Eurozone and the IMF could take more steps to uh, lend more money to these nations. Thank you very much for your time, Anil. And now to our top stories. Analysts say the latest central bank statistics, as well as the UAE Bank's full year results, they indicate a positive outlook for the sector in 2011. The releases show declining loan losses and rising liquidity levels, as well as improving deposits and funding. Although the total provisions for non-performing loans in the UAE rose by 36%, loan growth is still forecast to take further hold. With lending growth expected to strengthen and provisions to die down, the overall risk profile for the GCC banking sector will improve, allowing room for growth this year. That's according to analysts. Dubai's Foreign Investment Office says more than 40 new companies have been set up as a result of their tie-up with the Lynx Group, that's a company that helps companies set up a business here in the UAE. The Foreign Investment Office said this strong public-private partnership model, established in October last year, has increased foreign direct investment into Dubai. The Lynx Group helps complete all legal and commercial processes required to set up a business in the UAE. A recent report revealed Dubai attracts 75% of all global investments, with 81% of current investors looking to increase investments over the next three years. The UAE's construction market is forecast to pick up due to investors being more interested in the sector. According to Deutsche Bank, the sector is set to gather momentum in the weeks ahead due to the seasonal rise in construction business. Analysts predict the MENA region's construction companies to post an 18% quarter-on-quarter increase in earnings. Drake & Skull International is set to lead the industry with a 15% earnings rise this quarter. And there are also high hopes for Abcheck with a 7% increase. The Arab Monetary Fund, in, as, in association with the IMF, has begun a first-of-its-kind three-week course on financial soundness indicators. 30 central bank representatives, as well as policymakers from 17 Arab countries, are currently taking part in the course in Abu Dhabi. Its target is to take a look at how much capital a financial sector has and, by that, judge how strong it is. Also, it focuses on how much income the financial sector gets and also tries to assess its various vulnerabilities. The course then promotes how to compile and standardize those financial soundness indicators. And in our fast financial news, Emirates Airlines has signed a $2.2 billion total care long-term services contract with airplane engine maker Rolls-Royce. The deal covers engines for 70 Airbus A350 aircrafts and brings Emirates' entire Rolls-Royce-powered fleet to 128 planes. Emirates CEO Tim Clark said the airline looks forward to maintaining its relationship with Rolls-Royce to drive operational improvements. UAE companies continue to release their full-year results, so here are the most recent reports. Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank's net profit in 2010 rose 13-fold to just over 1 billion dirhams. That's the first time for the bank to cross the billion dirham mark. Group net revenue reached 3.1 billion dirhams. That's a plus of 22% from 2009 levels. The Dubai-based Islamic mortgage lender Tamwil recorded a net profit of 28 million dirhams after a loss of over 54 million the previous year. Chairman Abdullah Al-Hamli said these gains were driven by the recovery within the property market. Ansaru Real Estate posted a 60.2 million dirham net profit for 2010 compared to 495 million the previous year due to the high provisions and impairments. Revenues were driven by land sales and construction projects, but still fell by two-thirds to 1.2 billion dirhams. And after the break, we find out about how new labor laws are affecting both local businesses and employees.